Time now to have a look at what's happening in the business world with our business reporter, Kupano Gumbi. Kupano, good afternoon to you. So, uh, Sun Exchange, this is a company backed by Patrice Motsepe. This seems to be about solar panels. Absolutely, Steve. It's quite an interesting business model that uh, Sun Exchange have developed. In fact, they crowdsource. It's an international crowdsource uh, solar business. And so people from all over the world can invest in solar panels by buying a solar panel, which they, Sun Exchange, then go on to lease to individuals and companies that need solar power. It's really quite fascinating. And they have just gotten an, a, a new investment in Zimbabwe, a $1.4 million investment, which is around 21 million rand. Uh, our analyst, Chantal Marks, tells us a little bit more about this very interesting business. So I think that we're going to start seeing a lot more of this. Um, these solar projects make absolute sense. Uh, installing them is becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Managing them is becoming a lot easier. And of course, people are desperate for energy. And, and, and in a, an electricity-starved region, uh, which we can now probably categorize Southern Africa um, as, it's going to become very important for private sector players to start to start getting involved. I think it's a little bit easier in Zimbabwe right now, but things will probably start getting easier in South Africa um, soon also. Um, I think with this 100 um, megawatt cap um, now being placed as opposed to a much smaller cap previously, we might start seeing something similar happening in the South African space as well. What was really interesting about the story, though, is that investors can choose in which currency they want to receive their returns, either rands or cryptocurrencies, and apparently most of the investors there are opting for cryptos. And then Apple, its profits have jumped, and that's despite problems with supply chains. This is absolutely interesting for the Apple business. You know, Apple is the largest uh, financial, uh, not financial, the largest technology business in the world. It has a $2 trillion market cap which is four sometimes the size of South Africa's entire GDP. And so they were a little bit concerned going into the holiday period that they would be suffering from the supply chain challenges, especially with the chips and all of the semiconductor challenges that have uh, been brought on as a result of COVID-19. They were concerned that they would not have enough and that the stock that they have would not be enough to carry them through the holiday period. But they had a boom in sales, especially with their most expensive, their flagship iPhone was a knockout seller during the Christmas period. And that has helped bolster their profits in ways that they had not expected and they have not seen before. Our analyst Matete Tulare tells us more about that. Apple came out last night and said, Smartphone sales, that topped about $71 billion. Uh, that's been, you know, helped by strong demand for the iPhone 13, especially in China. So overall, you know, it's a tech giant that posted a net profit of around $35 billion in the first quarter compared to the $28 billion that we saw in the same quarter of the previous year. Now, the semiconductor shortage, which has been caused by a mixed uh, number of factors, including a surge in demand after the COVID-19 pandemic and obviously virus-linked disruptions in chip-making uh, nations, has affected industries across the globe, from tech giants to even car makers. Now, despite this volatility, I mean, Apple has become the first U.S. company to hit a $3 trillion in market value. You know, that briefly reached that landmark in early January this year. So it's a demonstration of the, you know, the tech industry's pandemic power and obviously the numbers that came out from Apple last night, quite interesting. And I suppose it's also going to be an interesting year for them, especially given how everything is going to play out, especially with the chip shortage that we are seeing and obviously how they want to take their business going forward. And Capano, it looks like people went out shopping over the holiday season. That's the case for H&M. Their profits rose. A little bit of fashion. Um, none of it rubbed off on me, I'm afraid. Well, this is quite an interesting one, in fact, because when COVID first started, we noted that retailers, especially clothing retailers, had a terrible season. And in fact, many people, because they were sitting at home in their sweats, were not really interested in buying uh, new clothes at all. And so seeing that H&M's profits have come out and recovered 
since then is quite a positive indicator that the global uh, market, at least, is getting uh, near to a point where they are over the pandemic and lockdowns and all those restrictions, and they're back to being fashionable again. Uh, at least in the, in the western part of the world, it's winter right now, so they are purchasing interesting new outfits for that winter season. And going into the summer, H&M is also hoping that they see the same rise in profits that they've seen in this last holiday buying season. Again, Chantal Marx tells us more about that. Particularly because they aren't back at 2019 numbers yet. So they're coming off a, a less demanding base and an abnormal base, if I can put it that way. Um, and doubling their sales in seven years sounds very big. It sounds very ambitious. But when you break it down year by year, it's 9.1% per year. Um, historically, they've been able to grow sales by about 8.7% or close to 9% per year if you exclude the, the post-COVID-19 shock. So I think that it's definitely something that they can achieve, especially, as I mentioned, off this lower base. They also talk about an operating margin of about 10%. Not too ambitious if you consider that they've only had um, an operating margin below 10% for the last three years. So they just need to go back to basics and need to do what they used to do in order to achieve that target. Kavana, thanks very much indeed. Interesting results coming out. Uh, fashionable iPhones and H&M, it would seem. Well,